since my last video I've made quite a bit of progress on the train automation. I wasn't sure the best way to be able to show this. Um, so the only way that I thought I could do this is to set up a couple of cameras and also record uh, what's going on within JMRI and put them together into one video um, so you can see what's going on in JMRI and what's going on on the layout at the same time. Now video editing isn't something that I am very good at and not something I have an interest in um, but I've attempted it here um, so along the top uh, is the uh, what you see on JMRI and um, there's one video on the left which is showing uh, the view into the station and the one on the right is the view from the station looking outwards. So there's quite a bit of, that I've learned over the past couple of months um, but this video will just be a bit of a running session to demonstrate what I've achieved and then I'll hope to cover in future videos how I've achieved or what lessons I've learned and just to share that in case any, it helps anybody else. So here you'll see there's a 150 that's arriving at platform 2 and the platforms go from 1 to 5 uh, from bottom to top on the track plan. Um, the yellow that's just appeared is the allocation for the 158 which is in platform 1 to leave the station. As the 158 leaves the station, the signals will change from green and then as the 158 passes the signal, it will automatically change to red. You'll see that the 158 has been allocated a route to the sidings outside the station. And then the 156 uh, has been allocated a route into the station, um, but that will stop just outside the station because it's been allocated platform two, but the 150 is currently occupying that platform. At the same time, uh, the HST has just been allocated a route. You can see the green signal and that will uh, run out onto the main lines. Now, the setup for JMRI with its block occupancy detection is only set up for the station area. I haven't done the main lines yet and in a previous video I talked about the fact that I may um, only cover the station area and basically run the trains myself around the main lines. Um, so I have it set up currently where I can basically tell JMRI that there's a train um, due to come into the station and JMRI will take over or that it will send out a train to me and I will be able to drive that train and take over and drive that tra train around the main line. I will look to cover that uh, in a future video. Um, and just one other thing to mention on this is that as the HST leaves the station, uh, you'll see obviously it occupies the block until I um, essentially say I have received that. Uh, you might see the mouse cursor just click the, the button just out on the main line and then that will uh, the allocation for the HST will disappear uh, from um, the track diagram above. Now the 150 has been given um, a green light and will leave the station and then the 156 uh, the signal for that will change to green and the 156 will then be able to enter into platform 2. Now I don't plan to keep talking over the video, uh, I'd rather this be uh, a running session um, but I hope that gives you an idea of some of the um, movements uh, that, the, that JMRI is, is controlling. Um, a bit later in the video um, a train will come in from the main line and, and you may see me alert JMRI that there is a train due in um, and I'll uh, be setting that as an, as an incoming train in dispatcher but then JMRI will essentially take over the train that I'm running on the main line um, 
and will bring it into the station, into the platform three, in the same way that it, the HST left. Now at this point I will mention that I am allocating a loco for the local loco hold service uh, to come in and uh, that will come in from one of the sidings and will enter into platform 3. Now platform 3 is currently occupied with the um, loco hold service that's already there um, so there was a bit of work to try to get JMRI to allow the loco uh, to enter the same platform and I'll explain again in a future video how uh, I've managed to do that. Um, on platform 4 and 5 there's also a run around loop and I have automated um, that to, uh, to some level as well. 
um, obviously the uh, uncoupling uh, the coaches is something that I do manually uh, but here we'll see uh, the loco uh, it's got a yellow light to come into platform 3 and it will come in slowly uh, and eventually it will stop um, it is at the moment then a manual process just to couple up to the coaches before it would then uh, be able to be set uh, to leave the station and quite often then it will go out back onto the main line and I will take over once JMRI has uh, driven it out of the station area. So here we see the class 37 coupling up to the coaches in platform 3 that arrived earlier from the main line. Uh, so that is me driving the train using the controller myself uh, while JMRI continues to run uh, the automated trains. So that's the 158 comes in again into platform one and draws the video to a conclusion. Um, I hope it shows what progress I've made now that I overcome some of the issues that I was facing and what can be achieved with JMRI. And I'll hope to cover how I've done some of this uh, in a future video. Thanks for watching.